Here comes to part 3 of relative clause. And we'll continue with relative pronouns. I've already explained what relative pronouns are in my previous video and if you haven't watched that, please go back and watch that first before you watch this one because this one is like the continue of the last video. And for relative pronouns, we can see who, whom, which, that, whose and we've already talked about who and which. So we're going to talk about whom and whose in this video and the next video. For relative adverbs, I'll put it aside first. Let's finish all the relative pronouns first. And today we're just looking into this relative pronoun, whom. It looks similar to an other relative pronoun, right? Which one is it? Yes, whom is just like who, which is used to describe human people as well then you may ask what is the difference between whom and who when should i use who and when should i use whom how can i decide now let's pay attention to the following part and you'll find out so let's take a look at this example first remember for relative clause we are combining two sentences into one with the debate word and that would be relative clause so in this example we see two sentences the first one, John visits his mother. Number two, everyone likes his mother. And to combine these two sentences, we need to make it like this. John visits his mother, whom everyone likes. As I've said before, the double H word is used to replace a noun or a pronoun, because it's a relative pronoun, right? So in this sentence, which word is replaced by whom? Can you find it out? If you're careful enough, you should be able to realize that whom in the relative clause actually replaces the object of the original sentence, his mother. His mother. It's the end of the sentence, and that is the object of the original sentence. And after whom, you can see that we keep the same subject, we keep the same verb. So this is the structure of whom as a relative pronoun in a relative clause. We use whom to replace an object in the original sentence and then followed by the subject and then the verb. Okay, so it looks fine, but what is the difference between whom and who then? Can I use who here? Now, I've written two more sentences for you to compare now. The first two sentences are the ones I've just mentioned. Let's take a look at the third and fourth sentences. The third one, John visits his mother. His mother likes singing. And to combine these two sentences, we need to use who to combine them. John visits his mother, who likes singing. Why should I use who here instead of whom? which word is replaced by who and which word is re replaced by whom can you find it out can you see that in the first two sentences the whom is replacing the object of the sentence his mother but in the second part the word who is replacing the word his mother the subject of the original sentence and then in the first part, whom, you can see that it is followed by a subject and then a verb. Everyone likes. But in the second part, after the word who, you don't see a subject. You see the verb directly following the double word who. So what conclusion can you draw from these two examples about using whom or who in a relative class? So to conclude... If we want to use a double-edged word for human, for people, to replace an object of the original sentence, like whom replacing his mother, then we'll use whom. After whom, it is followed by the subject and then the verb. And if we want to replace the subject of the original sentence, then we'll use who instead and after who we will just have a verb 
right after it. Because who, this word already replaces the subject of the original sentence. So you don't need to write the subject again. So this is the major difference between who and whom. And because the WH word whom is used to replace the object of the sentence, so the ending part of the sentence, so we can name it object relative pronoun. And for who, because it replaces a subject, the beginning part of the sentence, so we can call it subject relative pronoun. I'll show you one more example here. Lily always pranks her sister. All adults would protect her sister. So if we want to combine these two sentences, we need to use the word whom, because the word that we want to replace is her sister. In the original sentence, it is an object. Therefore, we need to find an object relative pronoun, whom. And then after whom, we have the subject of the original sentence, all adults. And then we have the original verb, would protect. So we simply put the object before the subject in the relative clause with the word whom. And remember, we decided to use whom because we are describing her sister, the word right before the WH word, remember? Uh, her sister is a human being, it's people. So we'll use the word whom instead of which, okay? So always look at which word you want to replace. If the object of the sentence is the word that you want to replace, then you need an object relative pronoun. So you should use whom instead of who, followed by a subject and a verb, okay? But actually, right now, in modern society, seldom will use the word whom to talk about the object. We simply use the word who to refer to any human being, either it is the subject of the sentence or the object of the sentence. But we still want you to learn how the word whom is used, because it will be in the assessment, and I think it's always good to learn something uh, fundamental first or something that still exists in the grammar world or with the grammar rule, okay? So that's it for today's video. It's just very, very basic. I just want you to be able to know when we use whom and how it is different from who. That's it.